ladies and gentlemen, and being a producer of Wrestle Massacre, as well as Inside Movies Galore, I am David Stregi, and welcome to Delusions of Grandeur. Enjoy the reviews. I certainly did. college flunkies. I've had enough of this from you and from everyone else. I know what you guys are trying to do. Break me down, drive me out of the force. Well, it's going to take a hell of a lot more than a lame prank like this to get Curtis Mooney to throw in his badge, so fuck you. Over. Did you miss me? I guess not. Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of Delusions of Grand Adore. I am your host, David Streggy, and uh, here I have another review for you, this time of a uh, film from 1997-98, uh, at least in the area of years, and uh, it is on this 50-pack of... Uh, uh, Pendulum Pictures, with, uh, which is a spin-off company or um, emblem that Mill Creek Entertainment went with for independent horror features. And it is on disc one of this set of Catacombs of Creep Shows. And it is the third movie da uh, down, as you can see, uh, see it's called Demons in my uh, uh, my head, or the demons in my uh, head, and it is directed by Neil Johnson, and uh, he first began with um, he first began with um, Morpheus Films as a production uh, 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 company, but eventually he expanded into uh, Empire Cult Pictures, I believe, um, later on. But uh, Neil Johnson is, is an Australian director, um, and from what I understand, Demons in My Head uh, seems to have the history of having been the first anamorphic widescreen digital film of its time. I guess it was the first film that went into digital anamorphic widescreen. So this film has that for it, first of all. And the film st uh, uh, stars Matthew uh, 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 Maracante uh, as uh, Travis Brown. Um, and Travis has just lost his job. Um, he's behind on his rent. Um, and he has a couple of housemates by the name of Regis. And Larissa. And Regis is in love with him, and he's in love with Larissa, and apparently um, Travis has this dream woman that looks exactly like Larissa uh, that he visits from time to time. Well, down on his luck, um, a, 
a repossession team comes and takes his stereo system and uh, a meteor falls in his backyard. <laughs> and uh, all throughout the, uh, this, some of it is done with computer generation uh, a, 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 um, and uh, you can tell that um, Neil Johnson loves uh, the old um, camera uh, style because you can tell that, uh, that it goes into black and white just a little bit, a bit um, maybe a little bit of 16 millimeter, uh, maybe a little bit of 3.5. It, uh, it's hard to tell from, uh, from this angle. I'm not exactly a camera-ist. But um, you can definitely t uh, tell that he's changing cameras um, as we go uh, 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 to make it look kind of interesting. So obviously, uh, the men who ca uh, came to repossess his sh uh, shit evidently used to be bullies in his high school, which isn't exactly cool. A and... Apparently, Ali, his dream girl uh, slash woman of his dreams, gets the hots for this um, particular bully. Now, this meteor that has fa uh, fallen, and before I go on, ladies and gentlemen, I'm de uh, I'm definitely g uh, gonna spoil the shit out of this movie, probably. Uh, if you don't know me by uh, by now, so spoiler alert. Meteor has fallen in his backyard, and these random Christian people end up sh uh, uh, showing up. Uh, one of them pl uh, pl uh, 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 is Marsha, played by Jane Rowland. And she seems to be a relatively decent-looking uh, 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 looking woman. And... Um, She's all spiritual, uh, uh, wool, and there is a stuttering man that, um, I believe his name is Bill, uh, played by James Doppin, and he, uh, <laughs> until he sees what the meteorite brought, he stutters, but w uh, once it comes to knowing what, uh, what the object is because evidently Travis uh, has discovered this rock and uh, um, Marsha helps him crack open the rock and inside this rock is a tiara of sorts or headset of sorts that seems to be that seems to, once the wearer puts it on, uh, transmits you to other dimensions. And apparently, once wearing this device, you can acquire some powers of sorts. But you've got to be able to use the power the correct way. Otherwise, apparently, the Nephilim will come to get you. <laughs> Which, the Nephilim are fallen angels, otherwise known as demons, and appar uh, appar apparently... That's where the, uh, this uh, film ends up be, be, uh, turning fr uh, from a sci-fi invasion kind of a film into a gore uh, kind of a, a, a film where there are some special effects in the gore uh, category. The other thing that I wanted to mention about this uh, uh, film is uh, obviously the music behind uh, 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 the, the film. It's got some um, interesting techno um, music t uh, uh, to it. Just going to see. Um, so 
the film was edited by, uh, by Neil jo uh, uh, Johnson, just seeing if there was anything. Okay, so the music, uh, the music, and the vocal of uh, uh, the vocal effects of Travis were actually voiced by Simon Mills. I don't know if that means anything to uh, to uh, uh, anyone out there, but Simon uh, Mills only di uh, di did that part this particular film, and from what I understand. Neil Johnson used actors and actresses that were locally in Australia at this point because um, I don't think he uh, be began living in the United States when he made this film. So... One thing I wanted to say is this film has something to do with gay love, um, as well as um, lost love and possibly gained love, uh, as well as infatuation. Um, and uh, the thing is, I feel like Travis didn't realize what he had at the uh, 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 moment, so it's kind of like a "be careful what you wish for" kind of a film, um, because um, Travis keeps uh, 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 wanting more power. He, uh, he uh, I mean, at first it was about you know writing his situation, but then he wanted to, you know, control people. Uh, in in, in a, a sense, and he realized he did wasn't entirely in control of his dest, uh, destiny or or the things that that were around him. So when when the queen ended up g giving him gifts, and when she went away, is when when the power was gone. That po uh, power. being, you know, in control of one's destiny. So, I enjoyed the special effects in here. I enjoyed the, uh, the story. Um, I, uh, I, I mean, I know th uh, that it was done on a limited budget, but I actually really enjoyed uh, 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 this film. I mean, for its small budget, I mean... The characters were likable enough. It wasn't that the acting was entirely all that bad. Um, and there was definitely some nudity. Um, as far as, you know, Travis having uh, one of the roommates be, uh, be, uh, being the female that, uh, that was of his dreams. Uh, so when... <laughs> when he wasn't exactly politically correct and peeping Tom in on her, uh, her action in her bedroom, that was uh, that was not surprising, but uh, but not uh, not exactly beneath him at the time. Uh, he, that was a moment where you could see that uh, that you know she was beyond his uh, beyond his grip of of things at the moment i mean you can't always get what you want and that is one of the things that i think was a lesson learned here so but uh i liked the, i liked the fact that uh, uh, that on the one hand the uh, the one guy was infatuated with uh, uh, with him and yet was also the one to kind of uh, help him get a grip and come back into the uh, uh, world. He it really did seem to um, care about uh, the, uh, our main character here. And uh, what was interesting is what happened to him 
in the end. So, in any case, hopefully you enjoyed my description of this film. Like and subscribe to my page if you have not. Definitely check the film out if, if you get a chance. It is on this 50 film pack, which can be hard to find at times. So, um, definitely check the film out at least once if you have not. I love checking out the um, digression of the filmmaking from start to finish. So that's why I went back to this film and then working my way forward. So thank you so much for listening. Have a great day, evening, or morning, wherever you are. Hopefully um, you get a chance to check this film out and just give him a chance. Thank you so much. Have a great day, evening, or morning, wherever you are. Sorry if I'm repeating myself, but enjoy. You were good, kid. Real good. But as long as I'm around, you'll always be second best, see?